Well, Buster and Billy, the true story, it's a true story. Uh, and I, I sidekick, I was sidekicking back then in the 70s. I always played best friends and, and, and sidekicks of, of some of the big stars. And that movie, I left the theater and come back to my home in California. And I was trying to save my marriage. And I took a year to sort of make myself fall in love with film again and get up to speed with movies. And then the 70s was a big renaissance in Hollywood movies. And I was kind of a theater snob back then. And I was wanting to sort of shed that, that affectation. And uh, so I spent a year just going to movies. And in those days, I'm sure they probably had it down in Chapel Hill, maybe up in Wally. We used to have the revival theaters. And we would have a notice by the phone on the wall of all the double bills that would be at the revival theaters. And you would go see double bills or, you know, the original thing, you know, and, uh, and, and, and them. Or you could go see double bills of screwball comedies or John, John Ford westerns. And I sort of rediscovered the American cinema. I went on my first audition, I got a starring role. My very first audition with Jan Michael Vincent, who was a huge star in the 1970s and arguably one of the most beautiful, handsome guys. And he's like right up there. His agent, uh, Dick Clayton, had once represented a little kid named James Dean. And in the 70s, he fired all his clients except for two. One was a kid named Burt Reynolds, and one was a kid named Jan Michael Vincent, and they became two of the biggest stars in the 1970s. And uh, I shot Burt Reynolds point blank with Will Gear's son. I mean, you guys know Will Gear from the Waltons, Grandpa Walton. His boy and I played uh, liquor store, hold up robbers. And uh, so I was working all the time. Um, but in those days, you did either movies or TV. So I didn't really do any television until later. Um, you sort of, and, and I think Travolta, when he was doing Welcome Back, Connor, and then did Saturday Night Fever, he kind of opened the door for everybody to do that. But it was frowned upon. If you were a movie actor, you didn't do TV. And, and it wasn't snobbism so much as a business decision. It had to do with, because there's more money, actually, in television than there is in movies. But uh, salary-wise. But anyway, I, I started my first movie, and it's a true story, and it's from here. It's from North Carolina. It actually happened here. There was a high school somewhere in North Carolina, and the boys had been kept back a year to work. They were future farmers, and uh, they, they worked for the war effort. So in 1944 and 45, these boys would have stayed back to work in the fields to make um, rations for the service, for the military. So they would have graduated from high school when they were 19, you know, or 19 and a half instead of 17 or 18. And uh, so that's who we were. And we were future farmers and we'd done our thing for the war effort. And we were just a little too old to be in high school. And uh, it's, it's, it's a strange movie, but it's actually got a great score by Hoyt Axton and a lovely performance by the girl who plays the bad girl in town, uh, Joan Goodfellow, and the other wonderful young actress in it, Pamela Sue Martin from Poseidon Adventure, and Nancy Drew, and lots of other films that you guys have seen. Uh, and they, they just treated me so great, and they were all so nice to me. You know, uh, we shot in uh, Georgia, and, Jan Michael Vincent, when he needed his cocktail, you had to drive, <laughs> we had to drive over the county line to the legal, the county that had liquor, you know. And Jan Michael would take the prop trucks, and the movie takes place in the late 40s, so we had all these great old pickup trucks and cars to cruise around, and you know, we, we had a buddy, uh, one of the guys on the movie was a big collector of Coca-Cola art, and we all went down to uh, Savannah looking for, because they had a huge uh, Coca-Cola industry there, and we were looking for antique Coca-Cola art. But I remember I could have bought a house on a square mm -hmm. in Savannah in 1973. You could get one for like $10,000, but you had to promise to fix it up. You know, you had to sign a contract that said you'd fix it up. I always wonder, maybe that was a rock. I should have done that. <laughs> one of those, one of those, maybe I should have done that.